Okay, so we're busy looking at different ways to build our business case and to assess a project and specifically its financials. And so the one that I wanted to talk about in this instance is the internal rate of return. So investments are undertaken with the expectation of a return. So, so what, one of the ways that we like to express uh, our return on investment is, is to refer to it as a, a rate of return per dollar or an interest rate that we're earning uh, on our investment. And, and this rate of return calculated for the project is known as the internal rate of returns or IRR. Uh, it's denoted by I with a, an asterisk uh, or I star. And if we were to write it out into words then we say, the internal rate of returns is that interest rate, I star, such that when all the cash flows associated with the project are discounted at that rate, so this is replacing our discount rate or our minimum, minimal, uh, minimum annual rate of returns, uh, the present worth of the cash flows is equal to the present worth, present worth of the cash outflows. So what does that say? The present worth or the net present value is equal to zero when the cash flow of the project is discounted at this rate. Okay, so if we understood net present value, we should be able to understand this. The only thing different is, is that we're not being given the uh, discount rate and figuring out what our net present value is. We're setting our net present value equal to zero and figuring out what the discount rate is that would get us there. So that is really our return on investment uh, that brings us back to a balanced uh, position. So let's have a, a look at it. And the easiest way to understand it perhaps is to graph it. So uh, think back to the last uh, uh, example where we were looking at uh, net present value. We did that for a particular discount rate or a particular hurdle rate. We, we used an interest rate and we figured out what the net present value is. So what this graph does is it's basically representing the present worth or net present value up the, the vertical axis for a variety of discount rates along the horizontal axis. So those, those are our hurdle rates. The net present value then graphs. And we see that for very low values of discounting, uh, we may have a positive uh, present worth or net present value. And at some point in time, that will transition into a negative present worth. And what we're interested in, in internal rate of return is, what is the point of transition? Where does the net present value equal to zero? And so if we can find that transition from positive to negative, where the uh, graph crosses the horizontal axis, uh, that will be our internal rate of return. So the gist of it is, is that independent projects, when evaluated using IRR, where IRR is greater than the hurdle rate. So now you have to compare, you've got your, your internal rate of return, it's a percentage, let's say it's 8%. Well, if your hurdle rate was 5%, then you should probably accept the project. It's viable according to the policies of your uh, organization. However, if your hurdle rate was 10%, so they expect to get a greater return on their investment than the 8% uh, that you just calculated, it's probably not going to stand the test of time. It's not gonna be accepted and it's going to be uh, uh, given off uh, to uh, and put aside for another project that has a better uh, return on investment. So let's demonstrate it. Uh, so you're thinking of buying a tuxedo. Yeah, everybody needs to look good. Uh, you're gonna pay $500, but it's gonna save you $160 a year in rental costs because you know, they're, they're always at least a couple black tie events every year. So you're about $160 a year. Normally you spend in rental costs, but by paying 500 bucks this year, you're going to save that. You figure, use your tux a lot. You're probably sloppy when you go out. You spill things on it. You know, it doesn't last very long. So you're only going to get a five-year life out of it before it's starting to look a little ratty. Uh, so what is the internal rate of return on this investment? So like before, let's do out our, our cash flow over time. Uh, and in this case, I've in indicated that we don't know what a discount rate is. So I star, because we're looking at internal rate of return, is equal to some unknown value. So here's our cash flow. Uh, we have $500 now to, to buy our, our new tux. Kind of a cheap tux too, so no wonder why it only lasts five years. Uh, and uh, then we have our savings or our annuity of $160 per year uh, for the next five years uh, shown here. 
So the IRR can be found by determining what is that interest rate where the present worth uh, of the purchase price equals the present worth of the savings or net present value equals zero. So we set our net present value equal to zero and then let's sum up our net present values. And so the way I've done this here is I'm using negative 500 for our cash outlay. It's in year zero, so it doesn't get discounted. So I can do that directly. But then I'm going to have to discount my annuity of $160 per year. So I, I'm doing it simply in that I, I also know that you have a series present worth factor and we show you the equation for that. You can look it up in a textbook. It, it doesn't really matter. So where we have this consistent series going on, uh, it will return a present value. If we take that annuity value of $160 and multiply it by the series present worth factor, uh, that will return the present worth. Uh, so again, we don't know what our interest rate is. It's shown here as I star, but we do know the, the time period is five uh, for that. So now I'm just going to do a little bit of algebra. I'm going to rearrange that. Uh, I come up with uh, this factor, the, the uh, series present worth factor uh, is equal to our 500 divided by 160 or 3.125. So all I've got to do is to figure out what value of I star makes that factor equal to 3.125. And, and again, these factors are either you can look uh, look them up in the, the tables or you can get your spreadsheet to calculate them, uh, which is probably exactly what I would do. So we can solve this equation. Uh, here is the formula for that factor and we can solve for I. And if I was doing this on a spreadsheet, that is absolutely exactly what I would do. Uh, quite often, if you're just doing it out by hand on a, on a quick calculation, uh, it may be easier for you to do it just using an interpolation between two values in the tables. So just demonstrating that here. So we, if we look up that factor at 15% and look up the factor again at 20%, we get bounding values. Uh, above and below 3.125 and we see those here and so I can just do a simple similar triangles do a linear interpolation between them uh, that's shown calculated out here and it gives us a value of 18.14 which is pretty close to what the actual value is that we calculated using the formula itself and, and, and so that's close enough for for our purposes so 18.14 percent is the IRR and again, you would compare that to your minimum annual rate of returns or your discount rate to see if it's viable or if it's an acceptable project in accordance with the expected returns on investment for your particular organization.